In this video, I'll be making a Hot Wheels scale diorama inspired by one of my favorite tabletop games, Gaslands. This post-apocalyptic build is made entirely out of XPS foam with the addition of some 3D printed bits. The first step is to customize a car for the diorama. I want this thing to look post-apocalyptic in order to fit into the Gasland setting. Earth is destroyed and what's left is enslaved by the wealthy planet Mars. Death race competitions are held and the winner gets a one-way ticket to freedom. Gaslands reminds me of one of my favorite video game series, Twisted Metal, the car combat game where contestants fight to be the last man standing. There's a definite Mad Max vibe to all this which is going to help with the art direction of this diorama. Taking apart the car isn't necessary, but it does make swapping out the plastic windshield for the metal cage much easier. A 3D printer is really helpful for customizing Hot Wheels since it allows me to create a collection of bits that I'd normally have to rely on other model kits for. I'm using super glue with some activator to stick everything together. Searching for the perfect car mods to print is fun on its own, and I can easily get lost in this phase of the project. Once I'm happy with the modifications, I prime all pieces of the car black. This primer is going to ensure that my new paint job sticks to the car. I'm going for a rusted out look, so I start painting the car with a dark brown. I then work up the browns into a lighter orange. Water down orange is then placed in all the joints. This car is looking much more appropriate for the setting and is ready to race. Next up is the terrain portion of this diorama. I'm starting with the shipping container that will act as the base for the wooden shack. Hot Wheels are S scale or 1 64th scale. This is smaller than the traditional tabletop games such as Warhammer. The nice thing about making your own terrain for gaming or dioramas is the complete control over scale. For example, I've made very similar shipping containers to the one here for my tabletop games that are at the larger 32mm scale. The build is pretty small and lightweight, so PVA glue is more than enough to bond everything together. The shipping containers are composed of the wall pieces and the beams that the walls connect to. Here you can see me cutting out the beams. I find it easiest to build out all the walls first, then combine them once dried. Smaller details are then added to the door once all the sides are combined. I find it really fun to see how far XPS foam can be modeled, especially at these really small scales. Next is the shack that sits on top of the container. This is going to look like it's made out of wood to give the diorama a post-apocalyptic vibe. Thin foam beams are cut out to create the frame of the shack.
3D printing is great for adding some finer details to XPS foam builds. I'm going to be using a hot wire cutter to make the foam look like wood. It'd be a bit tricky to texture each little piece one by one, so instead I'm texturing an entire block. And then cutting it down into a sheet the width of a piece of wood at this scale. The step is then repeated until I have enough textured sheets. This piece is then cut down into smaller strips in order to look like wood planks. I'm making sure to leave gaps in the planks to make the building look more ramshackle. Different width planks help the building look imperfect and more like it was thrown together. These 3D printed AC units add some extra visual interest. There really is no limit to what can be included in a post-apocalyptic build. Once dried, the overhang from the wooden planks are trimmed down. Larger planks are then cut out to be used for the roof. Smaller pieces are then glued on at different angles to make the building look like it was reinforced haphazardly. I'm using corrugated paper to add some additional detail to the shack. These pieces will be made to look like metal and contrast nicely against the wood. A couple of larger beams are made to help prop up the shack on the shipping container. I decided that I wanted to mount this piece on a base in order to display it. This stage is optional, and if I was using this as a terrain piece within my games, I could have left this step out. I'm covering the entire base with PVA glue to prep the surface for the basing material. A combination of coarse and fine sand is applied throughout the entire base. The excess is then shaken off in order to get ready for the painting. I wanted to quickly share a studio upgrade I recently received courtesy of Ben Q. Prior to this light I was using a simple setup using a table lamp. I must say this light was a definite upgrade. Its build quality is solid and the articulation is great. The strength and temperature can be easily controlled using the dial on the top. and the lamp can be turned on and off by just tapping the ring. My only criticism would be the cost, which is on the higher side for lighting. Overall, I'm happy with this new addition to the studio and would recommend it as long as it fits within your budget. Links are in the description for anyone who wants to learn more. I begin the painting stage by priming everything in black. At this point I'm also adding some extra bits to help add detail to the build. I place these down roughly before gluing anything down. The entire build is given a zenithal highlight to help with the next step where I'll be using transparent inks. At this point I'm also priming all my additional bits. 
I'm using inks to block in the major colors. I want the wooden section to pop so I'm going back in with my paintbrush and giving everything a coat of brown. I'm also cleaning up any overspray in this step. The base is then painted brown. Afterwards, I dry brush the wood section with a combination of lighter browns to help pull out the detail. Next, I paint all the corrugated pieces to look like metal. I then paint all the smaller pieces throughout the build. Once dried, I begin adding all the extra bits. The base is then given a light dry brush of grey, which will make the coarser sand look like stones. I'm coating the base in PVA glue where I want there to be flock. A combination of coarse and fine flock is applied to give some dimension to the grass. I'm purposely leaving a section unflocked to make it look like a roadway. This is the area where I'll be able to have my custom Hot Wheel on display. I'm also using some vine foliage to make the shack look overgrown. Pigment powder is placed in select spots to help add some dimension. Finally, the rim is cleaned up and painted in black. And that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future hobby content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.